November the 16th. It's 2023. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the madness. To the greatest show on the planet, the Nuclear Scumbag Show. Yike. Take something and something. I've been at this for hours. We got National Chains uh, Convention going on around here today. <laughs> it's been rough. Rough and tumble. I'm Dana Durnford, by the way. AKA Nuclear Scumbag Show. We got a great show for everybody tonight. Now, I would have done the show probably six, seven hours ago, but uh, a lot of people cutting up wood for their winter around here with chainsaws. The smell of gasoline in the sky. Fukushima Reactor 3 and Fukushima Reactor 4, there's two more reactors that have melted down. Each of them are worse than all previous nuclear meltdowns combined. Not counting the fuel pools at the top of the building, which is equal to about 10 reactor cores, are gone. The official story is nothing got out. Only one sixteenth of that coin will be dumped into the ocean each year. And nothing got out of these buildings that don't exist anymore. They were completely destroyed. That's the official story. More on that later. Uh, I had a poll last night. I had to go to bed and so I never got the whole poll my apologies uh, did new scales small modular reactors scam of the century fail because it was just another scam to begin with and uh, when, about five years ago like they came out with this fable that they were going to build a whole bunch of these tiny reactors and I know um, yesterday or the day before, I seen that uh, they actually got a pr the license is approved. But to my knowledge, they don't have all the application into the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. We're just going to jump into the news cycle. I think that's in these stories tonight, actually. We'll, work on, we'll get to it. The safety concerns surrounding Japanese seafood imports to China. And safety concerns? The safety concerns. As you know, there's um, a lot of protests going on about tritium, right? They're protesting here, they're protesting there. And that's the cover story. Tritium was the last one you worried about. You got decades and decades of reactor cores from four different buildings are gone. And uh, 40 years of fuel pool reactor core is gone, uh, a.k.a. dispersed into the environment forever. The, like, by pound each, by pound each, just a reactor core is more fuel by a absurd margin than all the fuel used in all the nuclear detonations. And just one of the buildings, the reactor cores, and the top of the buildings was decades of reactor cores. They're also gone. It's the worst case scenario, and we've already had it. That's an artificially constructed person you see in there, based on algorithms. I'm pretty sure there's uh, tons of girls out there looks exactly like that, by the way. But officially, that's artificial intelligence. So there's no copyright on it. <coughs> and can't copyright. My apologies. I'll try to turn the volume off if I got a little congested. We'll keep going. In recent days, the announcement of the Japanese decision to release to treat a radioactive water. The decision to release it. Well, when you look at the picture, do you really think they contained anything? To see a spark, the heated debate over the, the Jap seafood. As one of the China, one of Japan's neighboring countries with a long-standing rivalry, 
has responded by implementing a ban on all seafood. A ban on all seafood. Well, you should abandon all food in Japan and Asia, right? You know, there was 14 prefectures was banned by 55 countries for a decade. They, they swept that under the rug, and now they're get you focused on seafood, but don't worry about the other food. And you better worry about the other food because <coughs> your immune system has no defense against anthropogenic man-made radiation, and neither does your your grandparents or your parents or your children who are the most vulnerable or the elderly and the young. And while this move is purportedly attributed to safety concerns, raises questions about the true motivation beyond the China's decision. Uh, well, the motivation is to promote tritium, right? It's to promote that story that there's nothing got out on the one sixteenth of that coin. When in reality, all the uranium, plutonium, and all the dirty daughters have been unleashed up on the planet. And so that story was strictly about, right, dividing you into a narrative instead of acknowledging the facts. That's all that was about. It was really despicable for Aaron Mitchells. And some of the other stories that and put out. Notice the pictures. These are artificial intelligent pictures again. And using girls to attract people to his stories, right? Israel's gone insane. Israel's gone. Actually, it's what they're doing there. That's, we've never seen anything like that before. It's insane what they're doing. And they're doing it in the West Banks, too. UN Climate Conference excludes Taiwan. Taiwan's such a dirtbag, right? Such a scumbag. That's why we call it the scumbag show. And we call it the scumbag show because these people are just perpetual scumbags. There's really no other way to explain it. In Taiwan, in particular, has a nuclear industry, and and Taiwan is supposed to be part of China, right? That's why they're excluded. But and they're in the U United Arab Emirates for that constipated party twenty eight, conference of parties twenty eight. We call them con constipated parties, and they're promoting nuclear. They never done that until start doing it till last year apparently. And we cover all thirteen days of this death cult. Environment Minister calls Taiwan's exclusion from Conference of Parties 28 extremely unfair. Taiwan has an island called Orchard Island. And Orchard Island is where they stuck all the natives. And you know, after a few decades, they got a lot of nuclear waste. And so they went to Orchard Island and asked the natives, could they build a canning factory for salmon and tuna and stuff like that? Natives was like, wow, you know, you're going to throw us money and everybody in the community? And all you got to want to do is build a canning factory here? That's great, sure. And so they got a stipend each month. But it turned out it wasn't a canning factory. It was a nuclear waste dump. And they told the natives it was a canning factory. So yeah, Taiwan should be excluded from literally everything. United Nations, climate change, which is Conference of Parties 28. These are the degenerates of degenerates. They, there's nothing good about UN. They have no redeeming qualities whatsoever. They're in the military industrial complex. You know, 195 militaries, what else do you call that, I wonder? And they, the first order of business when they changed the name from League of Nations to United Nations after the Hiroshima and Nagasaki was to go in and flatten so, uh, North Korea. And now for 70 years, with 70 years this year, they have land, sea, and air embargoes against North Korea as just their continued hate and contempt for the civilians of the population. In fact, you know, they murdered millions of civilians. They didn't go after the Korean army. 
they went after the civilians. And Taiwan is the, one of the leading manufacturers of semiconductors and one of the top economies of the world, but, but they're China. And America is uh, using them like a good little puppet so they can set up shop close to China, right? And spy on China and interfere with China's. Because that's a big industry, right? The military has a big industry there. There's nothing to be gained outside of a big military industry. This comes as Taiwan is set to head, push ahead with an ambitious climate reform in the new year, climate reform, including a, car a carbon fees and threatening net zero policies. Carbon and net zero. Carbon and net zero. <coughs> Such scumbags, eh? Let me show, because it's been a while since we talked about this. Let me take you through the carbon and net zero. Net zero, carbon is James Hansen, or BP oil. And net zero is uh, Miles Allen. First off, you got Brock. Let me bring this up on the screen for you, it's easier. You got uh, Wallace Brocker which is the father of global warming. You got Moyles Allen, which uh, is the physicist behind net zero, got a cushy job now through United Nations. You got BP Oil, who with a huge uh, campaign after an oil spill of theirs. The campaign was intended to divert attention away from fossil fuel industry onto the individual consumers. And that's where we got carbon footprint. And then we got Scum of the Earth, and James Hansen, who in 1988 spent 15 minutes in front of Congress and pushed the word global warming. And ever since then, he's been a father of global warming. And said that NASA, not, not actual scientists, but NASA, scumbag NASA, was an important turning point in the history of global climate change, global climate change. Hansen's testimony was pivotal moment and marked the official beginning of the global warming policy debate. So you had James Hansen, BP Oil for carbon footprint, Miles Allen for net zero, and Wallace Brocker for global warming. <clears throat> and those four now have been weaponized in the United Nations countries against the population. Those four papers were seized upon and then used as, and you can't debate any of them. There is no debate allowed. Only their narrative is allowed. And you can't talk about a, a number of other subjects. But anything the United Nations promotes, you're not allowed to have a debate about. So they got to go. A new geothermal plant opens in northern Taiwan. And there has been some good politicians in Taiwan that have tried to get rid of nuclear, but the next administration immediately promotes nuclear, and it's the same everywhere else. South Korea was a fine example. The previous administration was vehemently against nuclear and was setting up to get rid of it. Then the next administration, the Sung Young come in, which was a former prosecutor, and denied Fukushima even happened. And his very uh, first day in office, he spent at a nuclear power plant getting his picture taken and put in all the media, uh, claiming a nuclear renaissance. So 20 megawatts of geothermal power capacity by 2025, that's a year and a half away. That's enough for 20,000 homes. And you can do this, all the little communities in particular can have their own geothermal plants. It's and just walk away for the next 150 years. Why wouldn't you do it? Because nuclear industry has scuttled all your abilities to have a rational debate anywhere on the planet. They've literally taken over your universities and your medias and key positions and the monetary of your governments. <coughs> and so this is a dry geothermal. We're at 1,500 meters down, which is nothing in the context of geothermal. 
the temperatures were 180 to 200 degrees uh, Celsius. So they use a heat exchanger because it's dry heat, which is really unusual. Normally they're using water, right? This is actually just dry heat. So pretty unique. So the dry heat eliminates a lot of so-called problems. Residual accumulation in the pipeline, reducing downtime, cleaning time. 95% uh, more of the tail water from power generation will be ejected back into the plant. Maintaining the geothermal reservoir. This advances plant's concept of extracting heat but not water. And extending the life of the power plant and achieving the goals of green energy. Written like, like whoever wrote this stuff scares me. They're, it's probably the same person. And it only uses 0 0.2 hectares of land. And has a power capacity of 0.84 megawatts, that particular site, right? But they're going to do 20 megawatts. <clears throat> White faces generated by artificial intelligence are more convincing than real faces. So if you had uh, two pictures, um, the majority of the time people will pick the fake picture as the real person. Because the fake picture is always, the person always looks perfect, right? No defects. And people get lulled into that complacency. It's the defects, so-called, like the pimples or, or the warts or, or the whatever. And <clears throat> that's the character of the human, right? Small-scale nuclear power dealt a major setback. There is no small-scale nuclear power at all. It doesn't exist. It barely exists on paper. Out of the hundreds of uh, small modular reactor vendors out there, only one of them have a partial application into the regulatory agency for a design, and that's based upon the old designs. It's not even their original. It's not even original design, and not only that, it's based on mixed oxide fuel. So it's the very last thing you want, right? Is the small modular reactors? It's the very last thing. The emissions from these sites after they, they're up and running is going to be hideous. And that'll be forever. Have you got enough farmland to accommodate all these things on the planet? Because that's where they put them all, right? Because the emissions get sucked up by the food, and that's how they poison you. Almost every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms, so you tell me. The company made history in January when its small nuclear... Reactor became the first in the nation to receive certification from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, has canceled it due to financial reasons. Uh, the first in the nations to get a license, but they don't even have the full application in. If they had the full application in, we would have covered it. We would have heard about it. And look and behold, again, another nuclear power plant surrounded by... You guessed it, farms. It's despicable. If you cover, if you closed all nuclear power plants that were surrounded by farms, you wouldn't have any more weapons on the planet because you wouldn't have any nuclear power plants on the planet. They're destroying you through the food chain, eh? These things don't stop hemorrhaging radiation from the fuel pools. There's no containment. New scale scumbag degenerates who harassed me for several years Claim to be a pioneer in small nuclear reactors, but they don't, they don't have a small nuclear reactor. How can you be a pioneer in small nuclear reactors when you don't even have one? How does that work? How does that actually work? They've been around eight, 19 years this year. 19 years, and they don't have a design. They don't have a reactor. They allegedly have a design, but they all work together, don't they? They don't really have a design. Nobody has a design. You don't have a reactor. You can have all the designs you want, but you got to build it. You got to make it work. You got to get the kinks out of it. Then you got to build a new one after you re engineer it. Five, 10, 15 years down the road, when you get the kinks out of it. It's not like you're designing a fork. And there's tons of them out there. You can start printing them tomorrow morning. These are nuclear reactors, a million pieces of paper. A pioneer in small nuclear reactors. They shouldn't be allowed to say it. it. It's outrageous. And New Scale, which is Department of Energy anyway, 
right? They, they just hid behind this moniker of the New Scale. Cleared the ultimate U.S. regulatory hurdle in civilian advanced nuclear last week. Doing so provided some hope for the long... No, they, they done that because the Ponzi scheme where they were taking investors' money to pay the, the old investors, right? And they're just doing that over and over and over to keep the favor alive. They don't have a reactor. They don't have one. That's why all the communities said, you know, what are you doing? We're, we're, we're not going to sit here and wait forever. And they, they waited, they, you know, these, these communities wanted an alternative energy. And so five years later, they just wasted five years. Because New Scale wanted to have big shiny cars in their garage. The executives. I know one of them told me he had 26 car garage from New Scale. And uh, he was pretending for months that he was anti-nuclear. Calling me all the time. Telling me he's going to donate all kinds of money to me in the near future. And everything was going to be fine. And then he came in, he called me up and he, and he made fun of me. He said, I don't really think I'm going to give you anything. <laughs> and he was quite insulting. Not the first one to do it to me. But that's how they work. They're just scumbags, right? I'm used to it. Fast forward nearly 10 months and the wind appears to have left the sails of the budding carbon-free power source. Yeah, they were calling it the carbon-free project. Just to suck the communities into investing in something they can't build and won't build. Right? And direct the money away from coming up with solutions. They done it on purpose. Specifically, the future of advanced small nuclear reactors that don't exist. It should be illegal to do what they've done. And that's, they're all doing the same thing, right? None of them intending to come up with a design. The Utah Associated Municipal Power System Project using New Scale's power small modular reactor has been terminated because it couldn't secure enough subscriptions from utilities in the western U.S. to make the project work financially. <coughs> no, they, they kept... They immediately doubled the price and then headed towards the triple and quadruple down in the near... By the time they built it, it would have been six times the original price. And it wouldn't have worked. Right? They were saying, you know, subscribe. They were saying, give us all your monies and we'll come up with a, with a reactor that will fuel your community. And the communities that done it Originally started realizing, a lot of them realized originally, but half of them walked away fairly quickly. The nuclear renaissance suffered a blow. There is no nuclear renaissance. You can't, you can't have a nuclear renaissance without a friggin' reactor. And, and we covered this, Thompson, many times before. It's no, guaranteed nonsense. The anticipated and feared nuclear renaissance, feared, nuclear renaissance suffered a major blow of the week when Oregon-based scumbag New Scale and the Utah Associated Municipal Power System, which were the suckers, tied up all their investments in something that the only investment was in their uh, New Scale's uh, garages and everything else. They had no intentions of building a reactor. Kill plants to construct a small modular nuclear. And they were given, they, they were allocated $1.1 billion by the federal government. They were given everything on a gold platter. Everything. They were forgiven for every mistake. The world was at their feet and they couldn't even pull it off. They didn't even try. It was about disrupting the re renewable industry with the fabled small nuclear reactor. You better chances of finding a Sasquatch than a small modular reactor. Several years in making the project become too expensive. Again, right, it, it, uh, pro-nuclear climate hawks or green nuclear evangelists, as he likes to call them, Thompson. What a revolting way to frame that. Tends to brush aside 
safety concerns and the problems storing the spent reactor fuel. Well, the reactor fuel has no containment. It's still splitting the atoms and it will for millions of years. And those atoms are released directly into the environment. It's one of the most hideous, monstrous industries imaginable. It's the only industry out there that pollutes the entire biosphere in about 20 days. And it's forever. It never goes away. The price tag for the plants, uh, nuclear plants in Georgia, which bankrupted Westinghouse here in, in North America, is still under construction. It's still not finished. And there's $31 billion. <laughs> right, the, f the first $9 billion they stole. 90% of the resources that goes into these things go to administration. And because they're deep in the hole, they just keep asking for more and they get it. And there's no way to make a profit. And this is, you see it with every single reactor through history. The carbon-free power project was supposed to fit the bill. No, no, that was the scam. They should be arrested. It's simply a Ponzi scam. That's all this is. And when the other investors didn't go in, they couldn't pay the other investors any money, it falls apart. That's what a Ponzi scam is in my book, if I remember correctly. New Scale claimed that its small modular reactor claimed, didn't have no proof, didn't have to design it to the regulatory agency. You had all these communities signing on, throwing money at it. They didn't, they didn't even try. They, they actually didn't even try. It would be safer to use less water. In fact, there was 35 times more intermediate level waste, 30 times more high level waste, and five times more fuel rods compared to a conventional reactor. That's what the small modular reactor produces because it's so inefficient and has to use the mixed oxide fuel. <coughs> A utility could theoretically build a, a micro-nuclear plant for less than $2 billion up front. There's a lot of nuclear reactors right now that were built for less than a billion. The old ones. Two billion, if you can't, you can't build it because they're going to steal 90% of the money for administration. And administration is going to spend that on vacations and Disneyland and, and cruises and everything else. The reactors will be manufactured in a facility, trucked to the installation. Quite, quite, uh, it's a scam. That's what that is. That's a scam what they've done. And they're continuing to do it, no doubt. Also benefited from oodles of federal subsidies. And who's their main investor? It was the Floor Corporation. And look at it, just the massive screw ups they've done at the national laboratories. And well, look at what they've done to Hanford. My God, that corporation. How many other new scale subsidy countries companies do they actually have, I wonder? First US commercial small nuclear reactor was axed. The first US commercial what they just announced that they got they got the design is approved. They were doing that desperations that more investors would come by and keep the Ponzi scam working, right? They don't have it. We would have heard about it. We would have been covering it. There's no way that slipped through my fingers. We cover, we've been covering this since the inception of New Scale's big push into the small modular reactors. The U.S. Department of Energy, which oversees the national laboratories, awarded the project up to $1.4 billion to New Scale. I said $1.1 billion, did I? Assume me. No, 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 no. None from the host of the other small modular reactor developers yet received the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's seal of approval. But you know, like, they, they, they wouldn't have canceled it if they actually had the reactor design. And, it, and even if they got the reactor design approval, that's just to build the test unit. It's not to build the actual manufacturing unit. Then you got to run it for five or ten years to get the kinks out of it. Then you got to re engineer it, rebuild a new one, and get the kinks out of that one to make sure that one doesn't have catastrophic flaws. And they don't even have, they don't even have um, access to the high SA fuel because they got to use military grade fuels, like 16% mixed oxide fuel, 
to get the energy out of these disease factories that they're claiming they can. Speaking of disease factories, the International Atomic Energy Agency, Ralphie L. Grossi, is there talking to children. Look at that. And these people should be charged with crimes against humanity, shouldn't they? They're telling the world that nothing got out of Fukushima. Uh, I'm always a little shocked at the scumbaggery of these people. I like Raphael Grossi. In fact, uh, his first day on the job, this is what I welcomed him with, was that picture right there. Welcome aboard, scumbag. And uh, he's never let us down. He's super scumbag. He's Mr. Scumbag himself, actually. He's saying nothing got out of these buildings, not even the tritium. And they'll release the tritium from the tanks at 0 0.62 grams, 0 0.062 grams a year. And nothing got out, obviously. Look at it, nothing got out. They should have razzed these stumps right to the ground, but they left them there so they could hoodwink you and manipulate you. And they did, successfully too, I might add. The importance of the national international nuclear was underscored in recent remarks by International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Grossi. As countries increasingly plan to adopt expand nuclear energy to their energy grids to meet the growing challenge, the growing challenge of climate change. So here's Raphael Grossi, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, who in, the, in his spare time sniffs bicycles, children's bicycle seats claiming that we got to have nuclear to so fight climate change. And currently nuclear um, is around 12% of the power worldwide. But that's only because they've been cranking up the existing reactors production. And the reactors are old and the metal is fatigued and brittle. That's the opposite of what you should be doing. The annual two-week course was launched by the International Atomic Energy Agency right after Fukushima. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Raphael Grossi, nuclear importance is growing as it addresses clean energy. It's the dirtiest, most resource-intensive energy on the entire planet. Like It needs two gas, oil, and coal plants, combinations, to run a nuclear plant. It can't run on its own power. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. And now they're down there saying Fukushima had no releases, nothing, no meltdowns, no nothing. Everything is great. Ignore Dana. Dana's fear mongering. In fact, I heard it from an inside source that he cries himself to sleep every night because I picks on him. Raphael Grossi does. I swear, I swear, that's the truth. Raphael Grossi cries every night because I pick on him. Nuclear, and look at them, all the, like they're just happy to have a job, right? And the majority of them don't know the difference. The majority of them don't know they're scumbags because they, they're convinced, right, by the nuclear industry that they have the moral high ground when they, the reality of it is they're, they're the worst thing can happen to humanities. France to regulate nuclear electricity sale prices. 20 of their reactors are still broken down. <laughs> they're still buying electricity from surrounding countries. They're still a burden on the surrounding countries. <clears throat> yes, sir, that's what they are. Science fear connecting students to the future of nuclear. That's so scary. They're going after your kids now. Because adults won't have nothing to do with them because they know how evil they are, right? Nuclear waste services in the United Kingdom. 
and women in nuclear in United Kingdom, right? And uh, who was who started that up? Who who was one of the leading spokespeople there? It was Jerry Dr. Jerry Thomas, right? Notorious scumbag. Just give me a second here. I gotta clean my lungs. I'll give you something to read here. Fifty students attended the first ever nuclear connection science fair, promoted by nuclear and women. Women in Nuclear and the Nuclear Waste Services of UK. They got some balls to call themselves a nuclear waste service. They've never decommissioned anything there in 80 years. And Oxford, which is uh, Wade Allison's old stomping grounds, Scumbag Allison, hosted by the Nuclear Waste Services and Women in Nuclear, Win nuclear women in nuclear win. That's their acronym. Win. Like they, they gotta do these little tricks because otherwise you'll spit on them when you see them. The event was an opportunity for young people to learn more about the career prospects in the nuclear sector, particularly nuclear waste. Right? They don't, talk, they don't call them nuclear waste services for something to do particularly about nuclear waste. And they got interactive games to trick the children into complacency. Nuclear is the essential part of net zero, which is Miles Allen paper, and nobody's allowed to debate it. Students, teachers, parents, and guardians. Well, the, the teachers and the parents and the guardians should be charged with child abuse for letting the children be... Uh, molested by the nuclear industry. It was a chance to get young people still in education really fired up about science as the nuclear ambitions developed here in the UK alongside the plans for the long-term disposal of nuclear waste. There's a real concern over future skill shortage because scientists are not going to go near there. A very real need to attract more young people into nuclear, and more specifically, the nuclear waste, and more specifically, the nuclear waste sector, the most dangerous jobs, where they're guaranteed to get polluted and damaged by gamma shines and x-rays and beta rays and neutron bombardments, right? And pretend that they're human. She actually thinks she's a good person. Ruth Davy. Senior Environmental Sustainability Advisor at the Nuclear Waste. How can you... Like, you got to give them these long titles so they don't commit suicide each day, right? So you try to make them feel good. They give them awards each year to make them feel good about themselves because they got a high suicide rate. Top 10 Disgusting Nuclear Energy Companies. The top nuclear energy companies provide recyclable energy which was really interesting they would use that narrative, which is illegal most places worldwide. To mix it. They're, talking, they're alluding to the mixed oxide fuel. That's illegal. Including degenerates, well-known like uh, the IDF. IDF, no. <laughs> EDF data. IDF is Israel scumbags. As renewable energy sources continue to see global growth in response to climate crisis, they're using the climate crisis to try to piggyback, right, the industry. And the majority of the po like, it's only, they're the only ones that like the industry. Everybody else hate nuclear. Right, there's not, unless you're part of the industry, you hate nuclear pretty well. That's what we're seeing. Although not renewable, nuclear energy is still recyclable. But it's not recyclable. And produces zero greenhouse gases. First off, it needs two gas oil coal plants. It needs a gas, oil, or, or coal plant. Two of them, large ones, to run a nuclear power plant. Right? It can't produce its own electricity. So these are massive sites. And just the pumps alone are, are a million gallons a minute. These are huge pumps you're talking about. Second largest source of low-carbon energy in the world behind hydropower. 
And like so, they be they come up with this carbon narrative in order to be able to call nuclear carbon free. That was strictly for that purpose. And so they're very they're very uh, they're very shrewd, and they'll destroy every technology in order to keep nuclear in that position. That false narrative, rather. Uh, Rasta Tom. Do they have no shame at all to include that as a company? Well, well, the list should be the top ten biggest polluters on the planet. So, Rasta Tom, First Energy, Public Service Enterprise Group, Dominion Energy. These are the biggest polluters on the planet, sure. Not the Exxon Corporations, Constellation Energy Corporation. Energy, which is the French degenerate. These are the biggest polluters on the planet we're talking about. EDF, the, the nuclear is the biggest polluter on the planet, period. Duke Energy. And next era, energy is the biggest one. $118 billion a year, or market capitalization. They said they avoid more than 24 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions each year, which is equivalent to removing more than 5 million cars from the road. Equivalent to removing more than 5 million cars from the road each year. I screwed up. Let me explain how that actually works. <laughs> these ships, each of these ships produce the equivalent of 50 million cars because they burn bunker fuel. And 15 of those ships produces more pollution than all the cars on the planet. So when they say nuclear, next, en next era energy has plants in Florida, New Hampshire, Wisconsin, and the seven operating units avoid more than 24 million tons of carbon emissions each year, which is equivalent to removing 5 million cars from the roads each year, which is the same 5 million year after year, obviously. But they don't, they, they make you think there's another 5 million next year, right? But it's not. It's the same 5 million. I, if it did actually do that. But just one of these big container ships produces more pollution than all the cars on the planet. There's 90,000 of these ships on the planet at any given time. That's 42 trillion people. There are 4.2 trillion people on the planet every day. The animosity equivalent, right? So be very careful of their lies. And like anything you read from the World Nuclear News, you know it's propaganda because it's a public relation firm. Their job is to promote nuclear. And they can't promote nuclear being honest. Uh, International Atomic Energy Agency team completes Romanian regulatory review. But the International Atomic Energy Agency is the ones that are telling us that nothing got out of Reactor 3, 4, or Reactor 1 and 2. So why should anybody trust them? Why shouldn't they be disbanded? How could they not? How could we not, as a species, want them disbanded? A consortium greenlights European small nuclear reactors. So this is a direct response to, you know, intelligent investors pulling the plug on disgusting, despicable new scale, the scumbags at new scale. And, and trust me, these are scumbags. There's only one way you want to describe new scale administration. These are scumbags. 90% of the money was looted.
Ninety percent of the money was looted. That's not cool. They formed a consortium to advance nuclear energy technology in Europe, but they don't have a design. They don't have an application that's proved. They don't have the first. They don't have a nuclear reactor. They don't have a small modular reactor. And and what are what are they going to do? Well, well, we're going to promote new scales reactor design. So you're just going to try to keep that narrative alive over there where people don't know the difference. Right? That's all they're going to do. Try to pull the same scam over there. And to show you New Scales, Westinghouse in their country and they're going to promote the failed Ponzi scam over there and destroy their ability to come up with solutions while they sit and wait for new scale to do the same scam. Tell me I'm wrong. French weekly nuclear capacity 7.8 gigawatts below the EDF estimates, because they're they're in a stock market. So they, again, another Ponzi scam, right? Twenty one of the fifty six reactors are currently offline. Thirty percent, thirty six percent of the French energy is offline. Because they got an old design, which got incredible flaws, and now brittle, and that they're they're training welders to work on them because the welder can only work there for so long. They they get a serious neutron doses and can never work there again. So they don't die right away. They die in a few years or slightly down the road, or they have debilitating. Lifetime illnesses because they worked at this disease factory to make the big dollar for a couple of years. And it's a scumbag industry. And they know exactly what they're doing. They're, they're evil by design. US, UK lead pledged triple nuclear power by 2050 at Conference of Parties 28, which is United Nations, which until last year, didn't promote, promote or even talk about nuclear at all. Now nuclear is the main one. How can people call this carbon-free? It's the most carbon-intensive thing on the entire planet, and everything is triply inspected on top of that. Like, unlike every other energy project, nuclear is the only one where they triply, independently verify every every material, every scrap, every nail, everything gets triple verification. And these sites will use enough cement to build a sidewalk a quarter of the way around the planet. And, so, and of course, cement is one of the most carbon. Well, I sh shouldn't use the word carbon. You should just resource intensive. You can't survive without carbon. U.S. will lead a push at the Constipator Party 26 summit. The triple amount of the installed nuclear capacity globally. But nuclear, the only reactor they're building... You know, Watts Bar took 40 years was the last reactor that they built. It took 40 years for it to come online. But they're going to lead the push for for nuclear. So you're going to triple, they're going to build another 800 nuclear, large nuclear power plants around the planet. By 2050! Like, it's absurd to suggest they're going to do it. First off, we don't have the manpower. Second off, we don't even have, we don't have the precious metals. They're too busy shooting that into space with Elon Musk and everybody else. How are you going to triple nuclear capacity from 400 and the current 420 reactors? How are you going to get another 840 reactors in by 2050? The Georgia plants, they've been trying to build, what is this, like 14 years or something? The, 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 the EDF from France, it takes them over a dozen years to build a reactor, and then it takes them another five, six, seven years to get it to work. They don't have the manpower on top of that. 
Declaration will call on the World Bank, aka UN, and other international financial institutions, aka UN, to include nuclear energy in their lending policies. According to, well, you can lend them all the money you want. You're just going to steal 90% of it from administration. That's well established. That's the way it rolls. That's that's what it does. It it steals 90% of the money. That's why it's so dysfunctional. The U.S. will likely be joined by the U.K., France, likely, not guaranteed, be joined by U.K., France, Sweden, Finland, South Korea. South Korea. <laughs> the next administration is going to kill nuclear. And they're going to get rid of Yoon. Yoon's got to go. Do you know that? And the pledge to be signed December the 1st in Dubai. So it's already written in stone. According to the people, so we'll definitely be covering every single day, seven days a week of the Conference of Parties 28, which is UN's biggest, latest, greatest scam. So we'll be followed a few days later by the nuclear industry's commitment to triple generation resources from 2020 level. So one of the people who asked not to be named. Because <laughs> they got so much confidence, obviously. Nuclear is 100% part of the solution, John Kerry. Yeah, we know he said that's to, at the World Economic Forum. He said it's clean energy, but that, that just because he said it, that doesn't mean it is. You know, proof to back that one up. I'd like to see their electric bill from all the coal plants, gas plants, and oil plants for a single year before the, nobody's ever seen their electric bill. How come? And say nuclear energy, the second largest source of clean, dispatchable, base low power, is ludicrous because you can't seem to build a plant anymore. And, and once you get it built, you can't seem to keep it working. The United Nations 28 Conference of the Parties, known as COP28, COP, right? Like the police. What a scumbag to use that acronym. It's, it just shows you the desperation that they have. Lawmaker approves the plan to allow small modular, small scale nuclear development. Clinton journey, development. Well, it's, it's, it's just in order to develop, they got to scam your you out of real reliable so, uh, solutions, right? So the minute that you talk about small modular reactors, small scale nuclear, or something that doesn't exist. When there's so many technologies that do, and the, and the best one, of course, is geothermal, why would you look at small-scale nuclear reactors for half the price you can do geothermal? And it already exists, and you can have it built in two years. Why put your eggs in a basket and hope that 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years down the road, a solution pops up? Why would you do that? Well, because you don't want to come up with a solution. Or you're the nuclear industry, which means you're a scumbag. Hence, nuclear scumbag show. Nuclear accidents tests scheduled for four hours on Thursday in Ontario, Canada, and Hamilton at McMaster's University, no less. And it, like McMaster's University has a a small nuclear um, payload. I shouldn't call it, it's not a small modular reactor by no means, right? It's just a small output reactor for test. And um, what you'll find out is that if you go within a 30 mile radius of that nuclear power plant, you'll find a huge spike in Alzheimer's and dementia and autism and Down syndrome and diabetes and heart problems, and liver problems, and lung problems, and respiratory, and pituitary, and thyroid, and adrenaline. And you'll find, well, like, we, they've done studies around these test reactors, and there's more males than females born. So that means everybody had to be poisoned to get that kind of statistic. Going to simulate a radiological transportation accident. No, this is just a way of getting a bunch of free money thrown at them. They can pretend that to their friends and families that they're actually humans. Because that's the only way they can pretend they're human. They need these little things, right?
90 percent of that money will be stolen that they're going to use for that and use the kick back into the community to make them depend upon the scumbag industry and why do you got to use the word safe there is a long and proud really proud tradition of safe or oh, so you admit that it's very very dangerous do you nuclear research there is you can't save research with a bunch of students who don't know what they're doing. <clears throat> it's one great big accident all the time. They're, the fuel pools are always hemorrhaging radiation. Lawmakers approve a plan to allow small-scale nuclear development. Yeah, we heard you the first time, Dana. First U.S. commercial small nuclear reactor is axed. Rising costs cut in. There was no rising costs. It was omitted cost. This was the scam. If they told you the real cost up front, nobody would have invested in them. So they didn't. Tell me I'm wrong. Prove me I'm wrong. Carbon free power project. Like to call nuclear carbon free, that should be illegal. It should be illegal. It's it's a hundred percent criminal to suggest that it's resource free. To investigate the possibilities of producing electricity. So they're going to... The nuclear renaissance suffered a blow. Yeah, we know. Broken turbine blades caused a shutdown at the Russian nuclear disease factory. So they break down like everything else. And there's nothing special about them. When they break down, it's a serious nightmare on top of it. It was built in 2018 with a next generation, a pressurized water reactor. So basically a brand new reactor broke down. And that's the story of all current new reactors. They break down all the time. The Soviets conducted dozens of peaceful nuclear explosions. Peaceful. The radioactive contamination lingers on. <laughs> this is really interesting. Where now they're now they're talking about radioactive fallout and saying, "Well, actually, it's bad." You really sure about that? No, no, it's bad, Dana. Yeah, but when did you find this out? It's been going on for a long time. Well, it doesn't matter, Dan. It's bad. I've seen the dead force in my own eyes. It's pretty eerie. A nuclear physicist and anti-nuclear campaigner. And one uh, explosion happened in the 1970s in one direction, but about two or three kilometers, there's still dead tree standing. Yeah, the petrified nuclear forest. Coniferous trees are, of course, particularly sensitive to better. What do you mean, of course? They're particularly sensitive to better radioactive substances, which are abundantly present in the aftermath of a nuclear explosion. Are abundantly present. And, you know, like the Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they only studied external doses. They denied the survivors were poisoned by radiation they said there wasn't enough radiation to hurt somebody and uh, Prime Minister Suga in Japan, the previous Prime Minister of Scumbag Land um, finally said to the survivors, there's not many left only like a hundred left or something in the original millions said okay well just for goodness sakes, we'll pay for your medical care in your last months of your life. Um, 50 kilometers from the village in the Far East of the Republic. A blast ordered by the Soviet Geology Ministry. For deep study, the Earth's crust rocked the area creating a radioactive cloud that enveloped 80 workers. 
John McCain used to say nobody was ever hurt anywhere on the entire planet by nuclear, ever, in any way, whatsoever, not even a little tiny bit, not even a paper cut. It was a horrifying situation with the radioactive products bursting out of the cavity. It was radioactive plumes. All, all underground explosions vented into the environment, right? The earth quack, cracked, and it came out at the speed of light. There was one place in America where they they had dug deep down, buried the nuclear weapon down there, but they had a manhole. They had a pipe that went down there for all the, all the cables. And on top of that was a man, there was a vent, and there was a manhole cover. It shot that out into space at 174,000 miles per second or something. And that's still headed off into deep space right now. It's the fasting, it's the fastest moving man-made object in space. Is a manhole cover. The legacy of over 100 peaceful nuclear explosions conducted in the Soviet times might not be fully realized, especially with the lack of monitoring of sites where detonations did not go according to plan. And the new numbers for the Marshall Islands came out, and there's a story about that coming up, that uh, Marshall Island was hit with so much radiation, it was equal to 1.4 nuclear uh, Nagasaki bombs every day for 12 years. And uh, French Polynesians were hit with, from, by France with the equivalent of one nuclear weapon a week for 12 years. <coughs> and they denied anybody ever had any health effects. Despite all the babies being born, they looked like jelly. Nuclear romanticism, nuclear romanticism, nuclear romanticism, nu nuclear romanticism, I can't even pronounce it, so disgusted. It seems at the time that the nuclear energy would provide a reliable, inexhaustible source of energy, could be used in various spheres of human life. Compared to other innovations at the time, such as the German radioactive toothpaste, don't worry, the Americans done it too, right? Radioactive toothpaste, radioactive suppositories. Think about that one, the radium suppositories they used to put out there. They went, of course, no, they had to give it up. They just started up another company and they came up with radioactive makeup for children. And it destroyed all of those lives that bought it, every one of them. Nuclear quacker, radioactive crack quackery. Comparing it to other innovations at the time, such as the German radioactive toothpaste, which is today seen as an example of radioactive quackery. No, it's, it's murder, not quackery. It's, it's outrageous murder, and they knew it at the time. In the Republic of Shashka alone, two of the 12 explosions resulted in accidental release of radioactive substances. There wasn't accidental releases. They knew what they were doing. All underground nuclear weapons vented into the environment, every one of them, at incredible speeds. And we know today some of these uh, underground explosion caverns are still burning at around 400 degrees Celsius. You know, 60 years later. In the Republic, I cover that one. the Moscow Times showed increased radiation dose rates of 0 0.5 to 1.4 microsieverts per hour at some locations. Uh, no, well, that's not how you would measure radioactive fallout. You would measure it in beckles, atomic decays per second, physical atoms. You wouldn't, you wouldn't measure it in energy. You can, but you would have to measure it also in a physical decays. well known from the Chernobyl disaster. What about Fukushima? And so cesium-137 is what they're talking about, detected cesium-137 nuclear fission byproduct, well known from Chernobyl. 
But what Fukushima happened since then, and Fukushima, each reactors was worse than all nuclear meltdowns combined worldwide. Each of the buildings, there's four of them. There were some secret tests. This is the time of the Soviet Union, I believe. But nobody knew exactly what happened here, only rumors. The local residents found it to be disasters themselves 15 years later. And today, some people in the region of a million inhabitants blame the explosion for their health problems, like cancers. And cancer is always thrown out there, but uh, literally the textbook of the medical is induced by radioactive poisoning because your immune system gets compromised on top of that and you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses and illnesses and diseases. Soviet area radioactive navigation generators that authorities only cleaned up in 2013. The Soviet area, so they had something like 2,000, don't quote me, but around 2,000 of these generators for lighthouses they were using strontium, a large source of strontium-90, and they never considered the decommissioning of these facilities, these lighthouses. Yeah, it was around, I can't remember the exact number, but I, I know it was over 2,000 lighthouses that Soviet Union installed with these ra so-called radioactive generators, uh, navigational generators, they call them, uh, there's tons of people got poisoned trying to remediate these sites. These are a hot. These are hot sites, and so just going there and looking at it, you're getting catastrophic doses. Although the per the reasons for tumor incidents in the regions are not yet established. Well, like actually, nuclear's they studied anthropogenic man-made nuclear more than natural. Stardust elements, right? The the elements of life, the periodic tables, right? They they added the periodic tables, the anthropogenic man-made radionuclides, which shouldn't be added. They're, they're their own genre. They done that to assimilate it into the schools and universities, and and make you complacent, your loved ones, in increments over many decades. The Soviet peaceful nuclear frenzy resulted in places elsewhere in Russia could still be the source of a radioactive contamination. And amongst these are burial grounds of nuclear waste left after the failed detonations in the Perm regions. And the site, I mean, you know, France buried their nuclear waste at one point in, um, in Algeria, in the Sahara Desert. And they won't tell the people where they buried it, even today. Ownerless burial grounds of radioactive waste are the prerequisites for radioactive problems. Experts say it's necessary to monitor such because some underground processes, like collapsing cavities from nuclear tests or floodings, can lead to the radiation hidden until now beginning to work wash out with water and contaminate aquifers. Well, of course, that's never stopped happening. It's not like it's something new that might happen. This has been going on since the inception. But they just narr they just framed that narrative to suggest that it might happen. And, you know, prudently, obviously, uh, you can quantify saying that it has happened. The main question is how to legally regulate what our grandfathers and fathers built and left us as a legacy. This huge amount of radioactive waste placed in the environment as a result of nuclear explosions for so-called peaceful purposes. The public doubts that anyone will ever take responsibility for the consequences of the reckless detonations of the Soviet Union. Well, remember UK, you know, they, they went to Australia, to Mont uh, Montebello, Maralinga, and waited for the winds to blow across Australia before they set off their nuclear weapons. And that they went into the deserts in Australia and set, uh, um, 
and set off over 700 dirty bombs where they wrapped up plutonium, fission, uranium, uh, very dangerous long-lived isotopes, and detonated them with conventional explosives. The, 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 actual, the actual dirty bombs that are still contaminated the entire ecosystem today, decades and decades later. In fact, the um, Montebello Islands are still too radioactive 70 years later to go there for more than an hour, which means they're too radioactive to go there in the first place. Because anthropogenic man-made nuclear is not natural. You can't find anyone addressed to complain to, to the Kremlin. Kremlin will say it was a completely different country. The USSR, they did nuclear explosions there and then they banned it. But now they want to resume. And so there's no end and there's no one to blame. Real Rostodom did not respond to the Moscow Times request for comments. And this was an article that I was translating. A radioactive navigation generator is removed from uh, Yucatilla. And so the last radioisotopic thermoelectric generators imported in the 1970s to power navigational equipment on the Northern Sea Route, removed from the territory of the Republic, the administration has reported. One of the acute environmental problems that the Republic had been solved, radioisotopic thermoelectric generators, a radiation source, is extremely dangerous for humans. Contain a highly active radioisotope based on the strontium-90. Fukushima's production of strontium-90 is catastrophic. We can manage predictable radiation in Canadian nuclear society. Now, like, the Canadian nuclear industry is controls Canada. That's who controls Canada. Through the Secrecy Act, they've been doing it since the 40s, since the inception. And they've ruined the country. They, they've completely taken over the country and the universities and the medias and government agencies. And they're, they're truly a shadow government here in Canada. And when Fukushima happened, 55 countries banned the food from 14 prefectures. Canada, after 93 days, removed restrictions from the entire country, which meant Japan couldn't ship the food anywhere worldwide, only to Canada. And Japan did, wasn't going to stop growing food in nuclear wasteland. This was lethal food. Now almost everybody in Canada is sick because of it, because they shipped that food here and poisoned everybody and compromised the health of the entire country under Stephen Harper. And Justin Trudeau, for the last eight years, have made sure that the country couldn't have a future by promoting Japan's food without protecting us. S -s demonic. It's the very definition of demonic. Nuclear engineering, which is a public relation firm for the nuclear industry, very powerful one. Russia's Mayak facility masters processing of transportable fast reactor fuel. Notice how these pro-nuclear lobbying groups promote the commies? They promote them, the nuclear part of, because that's where they want. Because that's where Canada, the United States, the only way they can have small modular reactors is they got to use Moyax fuel. Right, that's the only spot that produces the high SA military grade fuel that they need to make the. the and I mean, the small modular reactors when they get them up and running, you're going to see that's a scam. Eventually, they'll get some of them up and running, but you'll realize quite soon it's like the Georgia plant. It's just a scam. And it's a dangerous one because it stops you from coming up with solutions like geothermal and storage and stuff like that. And Mayak my, 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 my has so many accidents, I don't even know where to start. And so many releases, you can't, you can't possibly sum them up. You couldn't sum, it would take me a whole week of doing four-hour shows to try to cover Mayak. And I've done Mayak anniversaries many, many years. They took down my other site when I was out looking for spiders two years ago, right? This is the site I have now is a new site. And I had um, 1,600 presentations on that site. They took down book burning, right? 
There's an enormous amount of work goes in each of these presentations. It's a ridiculous amount of work. And documentation is nothing but documentation. If I do a two-hour presentation, it's two hours and nothing but documentation. And it's not like a radio show. I, I, I back up my assertions the majority of the time. Or because I do it so much, I can sometimes I'll take the shortcut and just talk about it instead of bringing information. But the majority of the time I'll bring you the information when it's important. We have the ability to do it. The fuel composition is based on a metal alloy, uranium, and mobarium, with elements of zirconium hybrid, uh, hydride, hydride? Mixed oxide fuel. Moyak. It reprocesses, it's a mixed oxide fuel site. It's like Donna Ray in the United Kingdom or Sellafield in the United Kingdom or, or, um, or La Hague in France. It's, it's a, like La Hague in France, which is a reprocessing disease factory for nuclear, has 500 security guards. Five, they don't, taking a picture there will get you literally shot. Nuclear, because they got nothing to hide, obviously. French nuclear fleet, ooh la la, redefining energy podcast. Always scumbags. There's so many scumbags, and they always got this smug look on their face. They're always very proud, right? They always try to... It's like they, it's like they revel in being a scumbag. The People's History of Nuclear West. People's History of the Nuclear West. In 1951, the U.S. government began test detonations of nuclear bombs in the Nevada desert. And it wasn't long before people started getting cancer. But if you had looked, you would have seen autism and Down syndrome right away. You would have seen massive death by heart attacks, lung diseases, respiratory problems, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline problems. Radioactive material followed from the bombs found its way into the bodies of people throughout the Intermountain West. And the soil and the snow were contaminated. Even the milk was dangerous. If the snow is contaminated, everything's contaminated because when the snow melts, it goes everywhere, right through the aquifers immediately. And reports leukemia, lymphoma, and other cancers. Again, they focus on cancer. We see this straw man argument all the time. Decades later, George, the scumbag Bush, passed Radiation Exposure Compensation Act, which gave cash payouts to the victims who came to be known as downwinders. Well, everybody's a downwinder. The wind doesn't just blow one way. See, it used to be downriver, right? And they got rid of that and called it down downwinders. And that way, implying that people, other areas didn't get contaminated because the wind only blows one way. Of course, it's ridiculous to suggest the wind only blows one way. Riga is set to spire next year unless Congress acts. And our guest historian, Sarah Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Fox says, the story of nuclear fall in America is far, far from over. It never goes away. It's there for another 100,000 generations. It's never going away. It's radiation, that's anthropogenic man-made radiation, and it's lethal everything with replicating cells. Upstate man finds nuclear plant intruder suspect in bed. I got no story, I'm not sure what that story was all about. The caller said he entered a vacant home on his property to find a stranger in his bed. I walked in the house and there's some guy laid in the bed with a sleeping bag. The man tells the dispatchers, the police. The homeowner put down his weapon when deputies arrived. He had a weapon and arrested Wisenhunt, who was charged with attempted murder, unlawful entry, and hit and run with property damage. And so I, f I didn't work out why nuclear plant intruder, because it wasn't at a nuclear plant. So I still haven't worked out, and I forgot to follow up on him. My apologies. I apologize. 
Nuclear testing fallout reached 46 states. Compensation should reach those states too. So 40, uh, 46 states. Let me see if I can find um, uh, that's not what I was looking for. Click too quick. There we go. All right, we're in business. This was a model. Uh, each line represented two nuclear clouds from two nuclear tests. So, but let me show you another model of Fukushima, so you can see how radiation emitted from a single area works once it hits the jet stream. So this is based on sixteen days of cesium-137 dispersal by France's government model. And so that's 16 days. So after 20 days, the entire plant is covered, obviously, right? But that's based upon a million to 10 million becquerels per cubic meter of air, wherever you see that dark, that yellow, right? So but that's coming from a single source. Right, that comes to the, that's that's follow, and then it spreads. Right, see how that spreads. So when each nuclear bomb is going to do the same thing. And so it suggested only forty six states. So the whole country should be compensated for what the nuclear industry has done. A recent study revealed a nuclear testing follow. A recent study. Six decades, seven decades later, all of Utah. The Radiation Exposure and Compensation Act, or RECA, has been a lifeline for individuals who suffered from radiation exposure during the Cold War. Now, I, I, that was your gallows laugh that time. I apologize. I was laughing because we've covered quite a lot of stories about this. And one of the survivors who had cancer said it wasn't enough money to pay for the radiation treatment. And and so I have the gallows laugh because you can't treat radiation illness by using more radiation. They're slaughtering you in your hospitals. It's murder. That's what radiation therapy is. It's murder. And I've done entire presentations on academic studies only. And I'll do it again right now if you want me to. I won't hesitate. Yeah, maybe I will ask. Recent research also suggests radiation may affect children and pregnant women more severely. Well, really? May suggest? May affect, rather? Uh, well, because children, once it gets into the bones, it mutates their stem cells. How do you think that's going to play out? Same thing for whatever it does to humans, adults, it's 100 to 1,000 times more for developing uh, children, like pregnant women. The uh, health impacts of the radiation exposure are profound, and scientific research supports it. Case studies and epidemiological findings provide ample evidence of the harm caused by radioactive fallout. It's very unusual to hear any of these narratives, even though we have the documentation for many, many years now. Address the financial burdens often accompany these illnesses. Comprehensive compensation is essential. The current compensation of RIC is not nearly adequate to cover the standard or cure necessary for cancer treatment, which is radiation. They'll take your children away from you and inject them with radiation if they're under 19. Because a lot of states, uh, rate, uh, cancer regiment, the nuclear industry is so vicious and so hateful that it's actually 
illegal not to let your children be radiated. That And that don't terrify you. There's something wrong with you. But the suggested current conversation of is not nearly enough, adequate enough to cover the standards of care, which is radi more radiation for cancer treatment. Uh, I get sick to my guts every time I think about the Cassandra story where they, they stole this child and brought her to the hospital on their lock and on her police guard, police guarded her and made her take the radiation until she died, started dying, and then sent her home to her mother to die. And the mother had a GoFundMe page to raise the money for the funeral. And she said, my, my child was a fighter and didn't want nothing to do with it. And they stole her, put her in the hospital, and, and the nurses murdered her. The doctors murdered her with radiation. And they knew it was only a 1, 2, 3% survival rate once you start giving them the radiation. Destroyed her. Destroyed this child. It was heartbreaking. And there's a majority of Canada, that's exactly what they do. It's, it's just the industry is just heartless. It's a really, truly soulless industry. Radiation exposure not uniform geographically. Utah, for instance, faced disproportionate fallout due to its unique landscape, making a crucial expanded definition of downwinders encompass the entire state. Again, like, when you look at all the different models of radioactive fallout, Like to suggest there's such a thing as a downwinder, somehow, ha like, how is this a downwinder when the whole planet gets covered? How can you keep using the term downwind when the entire friggin' planet is covered? How can you justify saying downwinder? It's beyond me. I can't comprehend it. Of course, like, the whole country is incredibly polluted because of radioactive fallout. There's no, I can, there, no, pre Fukushima, there was nowhere on the planet I can go where the Geiger counter wasn't screaming. The proposed Eureka Amendment 2023 aims to prolong the program for 19 years and broaden its reach to include more communities affected by radiation exposure. So that's like, I love Eureka, but the whole thing is you got to compensate every, every human in the United States and Canada. And worldwide, considering Fukushima, Japan should compensate every human on the planet. Everybody in the nuclear industry should be summarily, publicly, after trial, executed. These are murderers. That's all they are. They're just your everyday criminal. That's what a nuclear expert is. The Dan sisters blazed an anti nuclear trailer. Trail. Well, this is counterpunch. Anything from counterpunch is going to be 100% propaganda. And who's the counterpunch going to use? They're going to use beyond nuclear. Who's beyond nuclear? That was Helen Kalerica. Who's Helen Kalerica? She wrote 14 anti-nuclear books. And she disgusted him, what she done. Like so many of these people, that's what... That's what we're used to. These, we, we, you know. One thing we know about these people is scumbaggery comes natural. Here's Helen Callicott. She was in a radio interview, and people were at. She's done this many times, and they were asking her about reactor four. Did it look like this? Or did it look like that? And Helen Calicott done this around 200 times, where she said, no, the Japanese are very tidy people. Let me ask you this. Uh, you've said that uh, if the spent fuel pool in number four collapses, that you would evacuate your family from Boston. Do you think we would ever know the truth of what's going on there? And the reason I ask is because we've seen coverage in the uh, national news media here in the United States from ABC News and others that uh, take video cameras in saying that they're being given exclusive access to number four in the removal of the fuel rods which is said to have begun 
uh, and, and what we see in the, the video being shared here in America is pristine, a pristine interior building. It doesn't look like a building in which the top blew off in a hydrogen explosion. The Japanese are very tidy people and they have by robot control and by human beings removed the debris from the top of building four and it does look pristine. Yeah, they're very tidy people. You put the genie back in the bottle and everything does look normal. Nuclear war in the U.S. would wipe out 300 million people. How many people in the United States right now? I think it's 356 million. No, Dan, it's 356 million and one. I know. Send your mail to Dan, I don't care about the true number at ha 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 dot com. In the worst case scenario, 300 million people would die from radiation, which is probably one of the few accurate. That's how many probably died already. And there's over 110 billion people already died on this planet, right? The census of the dead. Any retaliatory attack from the U.S. would come from these silos located in Colorado, Montana, Nebraska. And these are the sacrificial ones, right? They publicly put them up on a pedestal to direct fire away from the main sites, what they call dummy sites, right? The Montana, in fact, they even bragged about how Montana, the new Montana site, was just going to be a dummy site. It's the assumption of scientists. You know how I think of scientists. All scientists should be sent to the Medusa Reactor 3 at Fukushima so they don't have children, at least... Used to model the fatalities from a nuclear strike with 450 ICBM silos in these states serving as the epic center. And then the fallout will cover the entire planet. Death occurs within days of exposure for the dark stuff. Within weeks for the little less darker. Uh, when you say death occurs 50% of the times, well, the rest of them died. The other 50% dies the week after. Death from acute uh, radiation syndrome begins to occur in exposed populations. Like the 50% the of the time, every time you hear 50% of the people exposed to this will die that day, the other 50% will die the next morning. And I really hate that narrative that was used to manipulate the consensus for many, many, many years. In the map above, they recorded the worst possible outcome for each location. Three million people living in the communities around the silos would risk serving, receiving eight grays. A gray is equal to a sievert, and three to four sieverts is considered a lethal dose, resulting in certain death. You know, uh, three liters of Fukushima water that comes that they pump allegedly pump from the reactors. I laugh because you can't do it, right? The electronics will burn out right away. Uh, e each liter is about two sieverts of betas, but it can't have just betas. It's got to be alphas, neutrons, and gammas there. So there's probably seven or eight sievers. So just a liter would kill everybody who walks past it for a million years of Fukushima water that they're pumping. And that they say they're, then they're going to filter it through an ELP system. Of course, the ELP system, now you can never change the filter. And then the minute you look at the nuclear narrative and then you actually know some of the nuclear science, you realize this industry is insane. It's it's Because it's told the same lies now for 80 years, they're stuck in that lie, right? And now because of the, the world we live in where we have information at our fingertips, it's easy to start disassembling their narratives, and we've been doing this for way too long. The symptoms of radiation syndrome depend on the dose a person receives and include nausea, fatigue, vomiting, diarrhea, skin damage, seizures, and even comas. So nausea, fam uh, fatigue, the average person will brush that off as just being tired, right? And then there's this compromises your immune system, become more susceptible to pathogens and viruses, 
that were normally harmless. The editor, the editors of the Scientific America, who I hate with a absolute passion, by the way, commissioned a special report because the U.S. government is in the midst of a one point five trillion dollar project to refresh his obsolete nuclear weapons. One point five trillion is enough money to do the entire country with geothermal. Right? It's, an, it's, an, it's enough to do the entire country with geothermal energy. And they're going to blow it on something called nuclear that they can't use. Right? So they spend all their energy and efforts making sure you can't have a future and making sure that you're always dependent upon them. And I don't understand where all the patriots are. There's lots of these groups out there calling themselves patriot and they're to defend the, the country and the, the constitutions and the Magna Carters and the Bill of Rights. And yet when time is there and the opportunity is there to stop this evil, instead of going out and doing their job, they're screaming and protesting instead of doing. Fallout-related deaths from a nuclear attack on the U.S. Well, the nuclear, the Americans attacked themselves. Right? The, the, the nuclear detonations in America was a war on America. The, it's the same weapons, the same fallout. There's no, there's no way to, to There's no difference whether they do it or you do it. It's still the same weapon. It's still the same radioactive fallout. Newer weather modeling techniques enable scientists to more accurately assess the spread of fallout across the continent. Really? Well, that's just newer models. Well, the models from 2011 from the French government and many other countries are quite accurate. These models have been around for a long time. They're very accurate. Again, right? They got to make up because the Scientific America. They got to make up shit so they can take the blame off their shoulders. The spread of fallout across the continent. In this report's predictions, hold true. Such an attack would forever alter the population of North America and beyond. Well, get, well, this already happened many, many times. The, all the nuclear bombs they set off, that's the nuclear war. It's the same bombs, the same radioactive fallout. Is the United States preparing underground nuclear bomb tests in the deserts? That's the Department of Energy's uh, drilling machine coming through. And they're such, they're trying to promote nuclear by the Department of Energy. Subpar nuclear compliance to carry 25 years in prison. So this is really interesting. Australia will give you 25 years in prison with subpar compliance. I still don't know what the hell they're talking about. Criminal penalties will be put in place to protect Australia's pathway to nuclear power submarines. And a new regulator stood up to ensure safety and compliance. So criminal penalties to protect the military industrial complexes, pathway to nuclear power submarines is how it should read. I'm guzzling water again. So normally, normally you take salt and you put a few kernels of salt, flakes of salt on your tongue, and then you just sip water, and then that helps the water uh, get into your cells. Because right now, for a lot of people, because of radiation poisoning, it's sitting outside the cells. Acting Prime Minister and Defense Ministers Richard and Mark Markless will introduce the new laws on Thursday. It's, it's probably one of the strangest stories I've got in a long time. 
the independent Australian Naval Nuclear Power Safety Regulators, and anybody knows anything about Australia nuclear industry, they're despicable scum. They're just outrageous scumbags. We'll oversee a licensing regime to ensure compliance with Australia's internal obligations, including nuclear non-proliferation. Those who breach the duties face a maximum of 25 years behind bars, while well, company gets a $31 million fine. So the company can't go to jail, see? They give them a fine. Because the company is a corporate personhood, it puts its taxes in offshore accounts. It's money in offshore accounts. It doesn't pay any state, federal, local taxes. So it's not even a fine. They got to give back some of the taxes they didn't pay. So shouldn't the head of the company go to jail to make sure the company doesn't break any laws? There's no incentive not to break the law. So you're going to put a person in jail for 25 years, but a corporation gets a fine. Those who breach their duties to make it safe faces a 25-year behind bars, but a company only faces a $31 million fine. That should terrify you. That should horrify you. That is completely unacceptable. I show you receive nuclear power submarines from the United States in the next decade. No, they won't. The, uh, the military industrial complex will, though, who's already got seven of the ten biggest weapons producers in Australia. They're the only ones that are going to benefit. Australia, Australia's not going to get no benefit from this. Australia got to do with their schools and road and infrastructure and energy because they're going to give all their money to the military industrial complexes that are now set up in our country. Kenya nuclear power revival sparks anger. Kenya can't even get rid of their garbage, let alone their sewage. How are they going to get rid of nuclear waste? Anybody want to explain that? Well, that's right, you can't. So the Bikini Atoll, forgotten fallout, the unfulfilled promise of nuclear justice for the Marshall Islands. So the Marshall Islands, they, they got them to settle without seeing the secret documentation of radioactive fallout. They took a small settlement, $150 million or something, right? And the story of what they've done to the Marshall Islands is just unbelievable. It's unbelievable what they've done. And this study from 2019... May the 15th, 2019, showed radioactive fallout from the testing program contaminated a huge swath of land and ocean extending over a million square kilometers of radioactive fallout that you can't live in anymore. The Bravo test was equal to a thousand Nagasaki bombs going off at the one time. Hang on here. And so they tricked the population into accepting $150 million before they showed them the fact that everybody was polluted forever. It's absurd. The whole story is absurd. Just bear with me. People were moved back into the nuclear wasteland. Sixty-seven nukes were exploded in the Marshall Islands. The equivalent of dropping 1.6 Nagasaki bombs every day for a dozen years, for 12 years. And compensation was $150 million. They didn't show them all the secret documents. They didn't the manipulation was just hideous. The population didn't have an education. They were, you know, they were very friendly. They, when the Americans showed up, they gave them all kinds of gifts, and the American gave them cancers and illnesses and diseases for generations, right? And who knows what the sadistic military done to the children? 
the equivalent of dropping 1.6 Hiroshima bombs every day for a dozen years. That that is like oh my goodness, isn't it? In 1946 and 1958, a total of 67 nuclears were exploded in the Marshall Islands, the equivalent of 1.6 Hiroshima bombs every day for a dozen years. And now in 2019, there's still over a million square kilometers too radioactive to, to habitat, to be habitable. Uh, they poison it forever. And imagine all the migratory, and this was the nursery, these were. These were the beautiful paradises, you know, there's all kinds of movies about these tropical paradises. But they took Christmas Island, took the Bikini Atolls, they took the French Polynesian Islands, they took Montebello in Australia. These beautiful, absolutely year-round, stunning, just the most precious places in the middle of the ocean, the most unique places and just magic and just destroy them with radiation. And one can only assume it's on purpose. Right, these beautiful, these are paradises that we should, we would cover today if it wasn't full of radiation. These are, would be spectacular, absolutely stunning examples of the species of just beauty paradises and they, they destroyed it with radiation and then the people left behind every in every one of the cases we, we see this incredible abuse from the nuclear industry and we see this le uh, legacy abuse that they leave behind too and they buried all their nuclear waste at uh, at the Marshall Islands and told them that it's theirs now and they don't even know what's there and then what they done to the French Polynesians, that was evil. I mean, what the French done, that, that's evil. And denial, administration after administration after administration. The, the Turkey Prime Minister asked uh, the Israeli Prime Minister, do you have nuclear bombs? And so they call it an Israeli Hamas war. How do you call it an Israeli Hamas war when Hamas doesn't have a navy or an air force, it doesn't have jets, it doesn't have 4,000 tanks, it doesn't have depleted uranium 155 millimeter rounds, don't have drones, it don't have, it don't have, um, um, you know, 350,000, 400,000 standing army, well-armed soldiers, supplied with, it doesn't have reconnaissance abilities, it doesn't have, it's not the fourth biggest weapons producer on the planet. You know why UFO sightings keep happening near nuclear sites? Because of the gammas, the alphas, the neutrons, and betas released, you have these flashes of lights that happen, right? Um, and it's kind of like an aurora effect except it's very deadly, and it's caused by the neutrons, huge amounts of neutrons and radioactive emissions coming together and create these, these like blue flashes, this is where you see these blue tints a lot of the times. Trudeau heads for the Golden State. I apologize, because that's Canadian, so that's the right thing to do. Obviously, I'm a Canadian, I apologize. You're in with Canada. I got the first thing I had to start. Well, I'm sorry, I'm a Canadian. I apologize. And so Canada just passed the World Health Organization takeover here, where everybody was looking at the Middle East. Canada gave the World Health Organization the authority to supersede Canadian doctors. So Canadian doctors have to uh, work with the World Health Organization protocol, which we know is a genocide protocol now. We know it's a military industrial complex operation now, right? It's a sad day. 
Uh, South Korea and the United States staged joint air drills with B-52 bombers over the Yellow Sea against North Korea. So 70 years of torturing North Korea. United States, under the auspice of UN, right, which was formerly known as League of Nations, changed their name after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, United Nations, and their first act was a war. So they went to South Korea and they bombed South Korea. It, it, it was, uh, let me see if I can find a story for you. It's a story worth telling, I like to say, because it just shows this contempt the UN that 70 years later they still have this contempt. And how many people has uh, South Korea ta or North Korea attacked in the last 70 years? Oh, that's right, nobody. How would you act if you were South Korea? And you were, they, they flattened every village with napalm. They burnt it to the ground. Every community was burnt to the ground. And millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps, millions unaccounted for. And they have land, sea, and air embargoes for 70 years for 70 years. And because they have a nuclear program, they're ostracized from the rest of the world. That's called collective punishment, all that, by the way. Because the United Nations, who also owns UNICEF, I might add, how many times has UNICEF went to North Korea? Never, right? Like, I look at life as I look at life as what will we be doing in forty years or what will we do in a hundred years? You know, will will we go try to fix this? Will we try to repair that? When it comes to nuclear, what what will we be doing? Will we try to stop Fukushima? At some point in the future, we're going to try to stop Fukushima. Right now, we're pretending it never even happened as of July the thirteenth of twenty twenty three. The official story was it never even happened. And I'll probably never find it. Unless that's it right there. Yeah, that's it right there. What's the odds? We're an hour and 52 minutes in to the show. So this is them flying nuclear bombers over North Korea. But what did they do? And they had 12 such exercises this year alone. But let's look at what they've done in North Korea for a second. They burnt down every town in North Korea. They napalmed it. Napalm is the sticky liquid that burns. So when it lands on children, and it does, and everybody else, and farm animals, and, and the animals in the forest and everything else, they have no way, you can't wipe it off because all you do is spread it. 65 years after the U.S. burnt down every town in North Korea, the U.S. military is simultaneously bombing or rocketing seven different non-nuclear countries. Yeah, they only go to war against non-nuclear countries. Israel never went to war in their life. They only went to war against a disarmed, a captured population, right? Eighth Army Chemical Officer Donald Bode is quoted as saying, on an average good day, good day, pilots in the Korean War dropped 700,000 gallons of napalm, 45,000 gallons from the U.S. Air Force, 10,000 to 20,000 gallons by the Navy, 4,000 to 5,000 by the Marines, and the Marines who nicknamed the burning jellied gasoline as cooking oil, because what it done to the victims, Perhaps two million Koreans, North and South, were killed in the Korean War in the name of opposing the rule of force. Four million casualties, at least two million were civilians. We know the numbers are much higher now. After Truman fired General MacArthur in May 1951, the former Supreme Commander testified to Congress that the war in Korea has already almost destroyed the nation of 20 million people. I've never seen such devastation, he said, and I have seen, I guess, as much blood and disaster as any living man, and it curled my stomach the last time I was there. 
After I looked at the wreckage and those thousands of women and children, and I vomited it. U.S. must investigate the, uh, Israel's use to ban weapons. Israel is using gas, like the Nazis. Israel is using uh, liquid up in uh, West Bank, which is inside of a little settlement inside of Israel, ter new territory that they captured, where they're going around spraying the Palestinians' homes with this noxic uh, gas in the form of liquid. Just like the Nazis in the gas chambers, right? They're, they're, the, they're the new Nazis, what they're doing. Let's talk about Fukushima. We'll end the show on that. Uh, with that. Let's run through a bunch of these. New York Times, we have Fukushima polluting the entire Pacific Ocean. And we're talking about how people should be dressed. Well, it's not just the Pacific Ocean. This is just 21 days of radioactive fallout, of just the Neptunium-239 dispersions, which decays the plutonium, I might add. And it's a lot worse than those models because those models are based on venting. They're not based on the actual meltdowns. And they're melted down. They should have been razzed all the way to the ground because the fuel pools, which decades of reactor cores, which is the same as that reactor, are gone, are burnt, are melted down and gone. We've never seen nothing like that. Not a single building on the planet has ever had these attributes before. And that's reactor three, which was a Medusa. This was a mixed oxide fuel facility. Reactor four was the same thing. Now they refuse to acknowledge reactor four looks like that. They claim it looks like the one to the right. They built these contraptions on top of these two reactors and then pretended that they're in the buildings that don't even exist. So the industry, because of 80 years of lying, have dug a hole, and we're all in it. U.S. has received a steady flow of radiation from Fukushima. Media paid little attention to the radiation in food as it probably involved Fukushima. Unprecedented phenomenon from using salt water, the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs. Phenomenon, they knew about that in the 50s from the ocean testing, and that these spherical balls that they create are, uh, they would ingest uranium, plutonium, americium, everything else, and become super hot particles. And there's studies that acknowledge that. Nuclear chain reaction may have lasted over seven months at Fukushima. The core produced radioactive sulfur. The MOX fuel could be a neutron source. No, there was MOX in all the reactors. In reactor four, there was around uh, we've done the numbers that they emit to was 21,000 pounds of plutonium when you had done the numbers. Radioactive 35 sulfur. Well, the, the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs caused by pouring salt water on the reactors after the meltdown because they didn't have any power for 1,200 miles. And so they were pumping water from the ocean. And that was confirmation it melted down anyway. You know, there, there wasn't there wasn't a person, a nuclear academic on the planet, when he seen Reactor 3, for instance, because that's the original pictures right there of Reactor 3, there wasn't a single nuclear scientist on the entire planet that seen that picture and said, shit, Reactor core and the fuel pools are gone. There wasn't a single one. There wasn't a single academic on the planet when he seen Reactor 4 after they tore the top off and said, well, shit, the fuel pool and Reactor cores are gone. There wasn't a single one. And that's why you got all these journalists from Australia, America, Canada, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom claiming they're in the fuel pool at the top of a building that don't exist, looking down on a fuel pool. There's no safe levels of radionuclide exposures, whether from food, water, or other sources, period. One Fukushima may destroy the whole country. Collapse of a whole country is possible. Well, they got more than one. I'll tell you that much. You got four. 
And you got something we've never seen before where fuel pools are have lost and melted down, lost their entire inventories into the ecosystem, which will never go away, right? And, and it looks like this. The radioactive fallout covers the planet. That's 20 days of fallout. But it never stopped coming out, and there was all these buildings then melted down at the one time. The food was banned in 14 prefectures by 55 countries, yet they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, and they're growing food right alongside of it. It's evil on a level that I, I can't even articulate. Yeah, I'm just going to make up a vocabulary to describe the ludicrousness of what we're talking about. Japanese foreign minister, stop claiming the food is safe, indeed. And if you go back and look at the legacy of nuclear, that's what you're going to see, this absolute contempt for, and hatred. Doctor says radium stops doctors. And then he knew the radium didn't do it because Marie Curie lost both of her hands when she discovered it, right? From the radiation exposures. But they were putting it in... in in packets and giving it to people and saying if you got if your joints are hurting put this on your joints of course that ends up killing them and it's a horrible way to die as the public possibly worldwide sickens over time worldwide as the public possibly worldwide sickens over time is guaranteed that's guaranteed and you see Fukushima radioactive fallout is global warming well it was the tipping point so you got 80 years of emissions but Fukushima was this massive Incredible pulse event. Irreversible heart damage for children, 50 becquels a kilogram, a CC-137. 200 million becquels on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. Try separating 50 and trying to perceive that. How do you smell it? How can you filter that? You can't filter that. You can't filter radiation. You have to contain everything. You can't, if any, you let anything out, radiation is going to be in it. The kidneys accumulate more radioactive cesium by far, the highest levels of any tissue inside of a cow. But a human is 50 times less efficient than an animal at kidneys are at removing plutonium. The human kidney is 50 times less efficient. And for insects and birds and mammals and animals and children and everything else and elderly, uh, but for children and small animals in particular, rather, it immediately ends up in your uh, bones and starts mutating the stem cells. And when you got the species, newborn chicklets and, and babies, uh, animals and birds and children, it's devastating to their future health and their ability to reproduce. Doomsday like radiation released from fire in the polar uniform, a global catastrophe. It would be a global catastrophe if you had a fire like that over there. So they came out and pretended they didn't. You know why? Because it would be a global catastrophe. Doomsday-like radiation release. And that's what it looks like right there. But that model is not based on the actual loss of the inventories. And what Ernie Gunnarsson... Um, the he unit used to four make the racks for these was... Uh, was damaged twice. It was damaged by so by a, all of the earthquakes that occurred, and it was also uh, damaged by a series of explosions over um, the first week or two of the of the accident. So the, the the building is structurally weakened. Now Tokyo Electric's acknowledged that they went in in uh, in May and June of last year. This is more than a year ago, and put an enormous number of extra structural supports directly under the fuel pool to keep the bottom of the pool from breaking through. So he knew for sure the fuel pools were gone, but he pretended they weren't. Any nuclear scientist that looked at that knew the fuel pool and the reactor cores were gone. There was. And so what they done to the building to your right of it was they leveled it down. There was nothing left. They built this contraption there. It doesn't physically touch the building. There's nothing inside of it because that's a lethal dose. You can never go inside. And they put these panels on. See how big the panels are? They're, put there, they're held there by gravity. But there's, you can't, they don't physically touch the buildings. They're way higher than the building. The fuel pools were at the top of the building. And so then they pretended that they were in the fuel pool. That's how they done that. They built that contraption there to manipulate those. Because most people, 
if you know the majority, 99.9 percent .9 of the population have no concept of how this works, and they just bought into that narrative. This is what Japan. This was cooked up, by the way, by the, the International Atomic Energy Agency. This couldn't happen without 100 percent cooperation of the International Atomic Energy Agency, 100 percent cooperation of all the universities worldwide, and 100 percent cooperation of all the media worldwide. That could never happen. That fake story. And then he rolled up people like Ernie Gunnison and Helena Caldicott. And he built the assemblies for the fuel pool, the racks that hold the assemblies, which is the reactor cores and the fuel pool. So he knew it was gone. There's, and he's still here doing it today. And Helen Caldicott and Christopher Busby and BBC, up to pretending they're in a fuel pool at the top of a building that actually doesn't exist. And the reason is because it's a lethal dose for humanity in the 8 million species. The buildings are actually gone. They're not pretending they're in a building because they're bored. They make a lot of money, but they're, they don't want you to know that happened. And now they, 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 now they say that never even happened at all. Now it's, there's only 2.2 grams of tritium. Nothing got out. They admit there's no such thing as a safe level of radiation, and that the standards are based on natural, not anthropogenic man-made radiation. The betrayal is complete. Every facet of nuclear all it screams betrayal. Every facet. The International Atomic Energy entire legacy is predicated upon deceit, dishonesty. There's no safe levels of radionuclide exposure, whether from food, water, or other sources, period. Fukushima's safety levels are not safe. I mean, just this single building, number three, which is the mixed oxide fuel, not counting the fuel pool, just that building is worse than all nuclear meltdowns in human history combined. And so when they first saw it, they knew everything was gone. There was no illusions. So they, they instead of bringing it all the way to the ground, they left it there, built a contraption on top of it, pretended they're in the building, and this is them actually pretending they're in the building. I went there and checked it myself, as you can see. So it's not very easy or very hard to fake any of this, right? This was built off site, and uh, then they assembled it on the site. There's nobody up there. You can't get on top of a building when the top of it doesn't exist anymore. That's the reality. And that's the show. I want to take James Lucid for donating $260. And uh, that saved, I was going to say saved the day, but that saved the month for me. We're fi I'm finally back in the square. And um, I'm incredibly grateful. It's been an amazing struggle. I've been sick for most of this month in the hospital for a lot of it. Surgery. We were supposed to get an organ out last week and then all the internal bleeding and it's just been such a nightmare for me. So I'm super happy to get two shows in this week. That's pretty awesome. We got two shows. Full shows too. It's two hours and uh Two hours and seven, eight minutes here tonight. And by the time you get to this part of the movie, I'll be sound asleep again. I gotta catch up on my sleep and uh, start trying to heal again. We gotta beat the shit out of the nuclear industry. They got in the way with too much in the last three weeks. Uh, what they're doing in Fukushima is not acceptable. It's not tenable and Sitting in silence is not an option. Pretending the reactors didn't melt down is the worst scenario. Like, this is 20 days of radioactive fallout at around 10 million becquerels per cubic meter of air of cesium-137 from the French. We've got all kinds of other major shakers and movers, countries, institutions, government agencies worldwide showing us the same thing. Now they're saying nothing got out. You got the entire world media stabbing you in the back. It's it's time 
to say no. It's time to make a stand. And it's time to call them what you heard. Scumbags. Murderers. And idiots. Generations of idiots have jeopardized the future of humanity and 8 million species. And that's not acceptable. And you'll find nothing but the truth here and documentation for my assertions is the evidence is overwhelming that you have to make a stand and it's the right thing to do it's the moral and ethical thing to do have a great night great day tomorrow hopefully we see everybody Sunday I'm trending back to my health so we should be good for Sunday unless something else goes wrong again and right now everything seems to be trending to the good and so I'm optimistic we'll be back on Sunday have a great day Thanks for everybody and your friends and your families and we'll see everybody on the next one take care of folks don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you make it this far it costs very little and hopefully it saves a life take care now <laughs>